this is going to be a bit of an in-between lecture. We're going to be introducing various topics that will be useful for future lectures and future pathology. First is cast. Okay, so cast are just they're like sh pretty much dead cells that you see in the urine, and they tell you that the problem that the patient has is either in the glomerulus or in the nephron tubules of the kidney. And they tell you that basically you do not have a problem in the bladder if you see cast in the urine. Casts come from the from the kidney and not in the bladder. So these can be big hints for pathology. Red blood cell casts are going to tell you that the patient most likely has glomerulonephritis, something like a, nephr a nephritic syndrome, basically. And the reason why is what was the problem in, in the nephritic syndrome? What was the underlying pathology? Remember, it was inflammation of the glomerulus with increased uh, poor filtration, and uh, you have increased permeability from the, inf from the inflammation. You get inflammation, you get red blood cells. Red blood cells can leak through, and then they can become eventually turn into these red blood cell casts. Next is white blood cell casts. These are seen in things like, we'll, t we'll talk about all these pathologies, later, actually this one later, acute interstitial nephritis, acute pyelonephritis, and then transplant rejection. And why would you see white blood cell casts in these problems? Well, it's because these pathologies, as you can see, are driven either by white blood cells or they have a lot of inflammation. So if you have inflammation, you're going to have white blood cells come in, and then so you're going to see these white blood cell casts. Okay. So white blood cell casts and acute interstitial nephritis, acute pyelonephritis, transplant rejection. Next is fatty casts. These are seen in nephrotic syndrome. What was the underlying cause of the nephrotic syndrome? Remember that nephrotic syndrome had a problem with the with the very leaky podocyte foot processes, the whole glomerulus is extra leaky. And then remember, we also have hyperlipidemia in nephrotic syndrome. So this is another way you can help remember the hyperlipidemia. So you have all that lipids in your blood, and your lipids can now leak through your leaky glomerulus, and then you might see some fatty casts. Okay, Fatty casts tell you you have nephrotic syndrome. Red blood cell casts tell you you have a nephritic syndrome. Okay, next is muddy brown granular cast. These arise from acute tubular necrosis. So acute ne tubular necrosis we're going to talk about, but it's basically, as you can tell, necrosis of, t of cells in the renal tubules. So these renal tubular cells will make up these casts, and they're going to look like these, um, they're going to look like these muddy brown color. I'll show you a picture in the acute tubular necrosis lecture. Next is the waxy cast. You see these in chronic renal failure. The reason why is these waxy casts represent extreme urinary stasis, okay? And that's going to happen in chronic real fit, renal failure. You're going to have poor filtration. Your urine is just going to be sta static. You're not going to be um, urinating a lot. And so I think of it kind of like how a melt melted candle wax, if it's just really static, it just sits there, it's going to be solidified. You're going to get these waxy casts, okay? Finally, we have highland casts. This one's important to know because you don't want to get tricked. Highland casts are normal finding, okay? It's a normal finding in urine. There's nothing wrong that can cause it. It just you can normally see it. So if you see no Highland cast, there's no related pathology. Okay, next we're gonna just do a little brief explanation of FENA and BUN. We're gonna do this before we get into our uh, acute kidney injury lecture. So I just wanted to um, define these quickly. So FENA, FENA stands for fractional excretion of sodium. So that tells you. Out of all the sodium that got filtered in the tubules, what fraction of that was actually excreted? So you can think of it as what fraction was excreted. You can think about, about it as how much of that sodium that we filtered through the tubules, how much did we reabsorb? It's the same thing. Now, lower blood pressure, what's, gonna, what's, that, what's the kidney going to do with the sodium if you have low blood pressure? Remember that whole axis we just talked about, how we have that renin-angiotensin aldosterone axis, and what's that going to trigger? It's going to trigger increased sodium absorption, both in the proximal convoluted tubule through uh, angiotensin II and in the collecting ducts through aldosterone. So you're going to increase absorption. So that what's the amount, how's the amount of filtered sodium? What fraction is going to be, what's the fraction excreted over the amount that was filtered going to be? It's going to decrease because there's going to be less excretion because you reabsorb more of the sodium. Next, we have something called BUN. This represents blood urea nitrogen. Okay, so I just want to show you, urea, you don't have to memorize this, but just, just so you can get a nice picture of what's going on. Urea looks like this, okay? So when we do this lab test called the blood urea nitrogen test, we're, 
we're measuring the amount of nitrogen there is in the blood. But in reality, so you're not measuring the amount of urea, you're not doing that, you're measuring the amount of these. But really, you can use them interchangeably because the amount of nitrogen, this nitrogen is all carried in this form of urea, okay? So you can think about, about, about it as how much urea is in the blood, you can think about how much nitrogen in the blood, it's all the same thing. What it tells you is, well, first of all, nitrogen is a waste product, is, uh, it's, from, it's like a waste product, nitrogenous waste products. You want to get rid of it. Okay. And your kidney works usually to get rid of this urea. However, if your kidney is not working, then your waste products are going to start building up. And thus, you're going to have more nitrogen, and thus, you're going to have more blood urea and nitrogen. And so, higher B1 indicates usually that your kidney is not working as well as you would like. Okay, that's it for our little introduction. We're going to go into acute kidney injury next.